Welcome to the Sales Lead Dog Podcast, hosted by CRM technology and sales process expert, Christopher Smith, talking with sales leaders that have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Listen to find out how the best of the best achieve success with their team and CRM technology. And remember, unless you are the lead dog, the view never changes. Welcome to Sales Lead Dog. Today I have joining me Rhonda Petit. Rhonda is the CEO and founder at 3x5 Coaching and the author of The Spirit of Selling. Rhonda, welcome to Sales Lead Dog. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you, Chris. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited because you combine two of my the attributes of my favorite guests, sales coaches and authors. You know, I love having the coaches on. I love having the authors on. You've got it both. So I'm excited to have you on Sales Lead Dog. Great. Excited to be here. So Rhonda, tell us a little bit about how you got your start in sales and your path to where you are today. I started, I guess you could say, I got exposed to sales when my mom and dad were in Amway when I was probably 12 and did some babysitting and some waitressing. And then when I was 21 years old, I was a chemistry major uh, with chemistry and business administration. I was working part-time at a company called Stopper Chemical just doing standard chemical lab work 20 hours a week. And my manager knew that I loved the business side of things and the JT Baker chemical representative got promoted or something and there was an opening. She said, why don't you just apply for that job? So I did, I took her idea and did it. And I was the first, JT Baker at that time was a chemical company that was I think 85 years old. And I was the first female woman that they, put in an outside sales position in a car without any prior commercial experience. And um, so that's where I started my career. And then I got in, you know, went from selling chemicals into the molecular field with the human genome being sequenced and did a lot of things in PCR and instruments to do that. And then um, had experiences with software companies, diagnostic startups. Um, and then by 2019, I, uh, or my position, uh, you know, they decided to make some changes and they eliminated a bunch of positions, mine of which was one. And I said, okay, um, I looked up in the sky and said, I guess, cause I had gone to coaching school and always wanted to run my own business. And I said, I guess time is now, it's not going to be later. So I started my own business in 20, 2019 and then, um, uh, got into the book writing, uh, in 2020. That's awesome. Tell me how the idea for the book came about. Well, as you, you know, we all, you know, started experience, I guess, in March <clears throat> coming back, we were, we were actually at a golf tournament at the travelers and I'm not uh, you know, the players championship and the COVID thing hit. And so a lot of, I had some other coaches, they had, uh, we started doing all these virtual meetings, trying to, you know, get everybody uplifted because, you know, it was tough. Every, you know, everybody's trying to cope and deal with the stress of not knowing anything about what we were dealing with, with COVID and a book um, coach came on her show and she had me on a guest show on the show with her. And I listened to the book coach and said, no, that's an interesting idea. And um, thought about these universal laws that I was learning about. And I said, man, if I would have only known these, these things when I was 21, when I started, oh my gosh, what I, I could have been dangerous, right? Yeah. So I said, in, then I sat down with her and she pulled out a book outline out of me that I didn't even know existed. And I just kept going. And I, I really believe the book was kind of channeled through me. So it was, it was a really cool experience being an instrument for something like this to be produced. And you're putting something great out into the world for other people to use. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the title of the book, the spirit of selling, how did you come up with that title? I was through studying with Bob Proctor. Um, he always got us reading Troward and there was a, there's two chapters in there. One was called the spirit of opulence and one was called the um entering into the spirit of it and i thought you know that's what it is it's like the spirit of selling and the name just came and then um you know it it was amazing there were people that uh like the the cover the people referred me to the guy that came up with the book cover and i don't know everything just kind of started unfolding 
I, I, it was, it was a fabulous experience. That's awesome. Think, That's awesome. Take, take action on your ideas when you get intuition. Yeah. It's not always easy to do. I mean, it, <laughs> everything you have going on in your life to commit to writing a book, that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's jump right in to the book. Chapter one, the maze of misconceptions about sales. So right out of the gate, you know, the maze of mis that means there's a lot of misconceptions. Can you dive into to what this maze is, is made out of this maze of mis misconceptions? Uh, absolutely. You know, concepts we get concepts and ideas from people and most of the, a lot of the ideas we accept we really accept without kind of digging into fact or truth and if you have misconceptions about a concept you can get lost and so i in the first chapter there what i'm trying to do is pull out most of the misconceptions that hold sales anybody sales people business owners back from selling uh, one of the big ones is I think some people have an association of a salesperson with a con artist. And I, you know, talk about like, wh where's the convergence of those two words, con artist and sales professional. And, um, you know, both people persuade, but with different intents. A con artist is thinking about what they're going to get out of it, right? They're, they're in it to get. And a pro is in, in it to give and serve. Yeah, you know, I just had a conversation last night with my wife about manipulation. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, initially people think manipulation, that's a bad thing. And, and I said, you know, to me, it really comes down to what is the outcome you're driving them to? If you're trying to steal something or take something from them, yeah, then it's negative. But if you're trying to help them and you're trying to manipulate them towards a benefit uh, for them or a better outcome for them, then manipulation you know, everything we're doing, we're manipulating people, but it's really about the outcome, right? Yeah, I like the, the persuade because what the, the word persuade to associate that when you're selling, because I think when we persuade, we're helping walk someone across a bridge with right. some faith, right? Right. And when you, when you actually really listen to a client and really understand what it is they want, you can do a couple things. One, you can see if it's a fit. And if it, it is a fit and you know for a fact that what you have is gonna help them get what they want, it's your responsibility to help them get over the bridge. I mean, I right. you, you have to look at it like that. Like, why would you leave them off the hook? You can You have what they need to get across the bridge. Now you may have to come up with some innovative ways to help them get there. But it, it's your responsibility as a real pro to transform people's lives in a positive way and help them build the faith. Because a lot of times people don't have the belief in themselves. But if you, as a, as a part of your service, believe in, in them and believe the divinity within them and that they can do that and you can help them get there, you, you need to do that. I mean, it's your responsibility. <laughs> That's right. And, and that's this is the difference between a sales pro and an order taker, right? Exactly. Sales pro has that 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 plan and that ability to help them, that persuasion capability to help them across the bridge. That's right. Yeah. You know? So as a sales leader, how do I address this maze of misconceptions? If 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 I'm dealing with that in my team, how do I address these these issues? I I think the first step as a leader is realizing that people behavior is due to a lot of beliefs. And so when you really seek to understand, you know, like with who, your team, like what's going on and, you know, what it, are there some assumptions? What are they? Where did you get that assumption? Where did you pick up that belief? How do you know it's true? Just because it happened in the past, why does it have to be happening here in the present? You know, why are we pulling the negative stuff from the past into the present uh, and be willing to help them realize that they have a thing called a paradigm or fixed beliefs or habits or ideas that they came across. They may not even know that they have them. <laughs> Nobody might have ever helped them observe or look at their behaviors, right? And so, so as a leader, I think you wanna to go to the cause, like law, law of cause and effect. You wanna to go to the cause. What is the cause? There's a fixed idea, belief, in their subconscious mind that's that's regulating their behavior 
and get to the bottom of it and help them come up with a new idea and embrace and emotionalize a new idea to cause a different change in the behavior. But you got to work at cause, not at, you know, you can't work at the back end just saying, do it this way and never get to the root cause. Right. You really have to understand. It's just like when you need to understand your customer, you have to understand your salespeople, right? Yes. What's yeah. motivating and, them? What's going on in their life? What's their pain points they're struggling right. with? Yeah. And and then what 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 do they want to get out of their, you know, what's holding them back and, and how can you help them, you know, be more empowered? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What are some of the other misconceptions that people have about sales? Um, that you make a sale, you don't earn it. Um, we don't make sales, we earn them. That sale, sale is an effect of service that you provide or value that you create and provide. Service rendered. So that that's a big one. You know, you hear people at the end of a quarter, you know, get out there and make it happen. <laughs> well, what the what the bosses and the CEO should be saying is get out there and create some more value. <laughs> right. And we'll get the sales, you know. Um, right. So that's 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 one of them. Yeah, and really, you can't make anybody do anything. You've got to yes. earn it. You've got, right. and that's earning on multiple levels, um, not just uh, you know. There's so much that goes into this, you know, to earning the sale. Can you talk about that? Like, what what are some of the things that the team should be doing to earn the sale? There's, you know, how do you? you I talk about it in my book. Bring your ace to the game, and it's A A C E, and you know, when you, you're not just selling a product, you're selling you and all the things that you can give. And there's many things that we all as human beings can give other human beings that we all need. <laughs> so you can give people appreciation. You can acknowledge people. You can be consistent in your performance and consistent in your word and your integrity. You can provide excellence when you show up, you know, are you coming prepared um, to give and leave the person with an impression of increase and, you know, having empathy with, with the person, you know, I think we all as, as salespeople, there's an ego empathy balance that you want to bring, um, to a person. You want to be able to sit down on the couch with them and walk, you know, get in their moccasins and really experience what it is that they're going through and what, where they are and where they want to go. So that's the empathy part. But then once you see that and know that you've got to have enough ego and leader, you know, the ego is just the seat of the will, your ability to lead, lead somebody across the bridge. You need to provide them direction. And sometimes as a true pro, you're going to tell them something that they may not want to hear, but they need to hear it. Somebody. And so you have to, you know, be, may I be frank with you? Can I, you know, just share this with you and then, you know, let them know what they need to know. Yeah. And that takes courage and leadership. Yeah. Um, I had that conversation earlier this week with a company that uh, they came to us with a plan and I had to say, you know what, I'm seeing some issues with this plan. You know, I think there's a path forward, but, you know, I, I wouldn't be honest with you if I'm not going to point these out to you. And if I don't point them out, I feel like I'm worried I'm going to lose my credibility. They're going to not, they're not going to trust me at some point. It may not be today, but at some point, that trust is going to break down. Yeah. And you being authentic like that with them, I'm sure they appreciate it. I hope so. I think so. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you speak the truth, you're always free, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's like, hey, I, I know I did what I knew what felt was right. And they may not like it, you know, but it's like, to me, it's all about, I need to eliminate risk you know, not only for them, but to the whole process and risk to them trusting me. Because even if I, I didn't see that and I landed the sale and then we fail because I didn't alert them to these things. Yeah. I, that damage is way more worse than losing a deal. Yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah. Um, chapter two, do you judge money or expect it? First thing I want to know is how did you come up with the title for that or, or just the, fo the, the focus that you wanted to have that in your book? Uh, because I think the biggest misconception, I mean, there's so many misconceptions about money. I had to call them out. I mean, uh, you know, I can't, so, so the title, where did it come from? Because there's so many judgments about money. I said, okay, we've got to have the judge thing there. 
And the other big money misconception that holds some salespeople or new business owners back from earning money is worth and, and realizing that money is a reflection of service rendered. It's not something bad or dirty or evil or, you know, and that to really people recognizing the value of what they're selling, right? So you have to know what you're selling. And, you know, I talk about that, uh, that you're never selling, you know, the features, you're selling the benefits. You know, as Elmer Wheeler used to say, um, you don't buy a quarter inch drill because you want a quarter inch drill. You buy a quarter inch drill because you want quarter inch holes, right? right. You everything in your closet um, is because of the way it made you feel. The car you chose for whatever reason was the feelings that you got from buying that car. Um, it, you know, we all make decisions based upon emotion. We justify them with logic. So think about what you're selling and what really is that worth to a person. And you've got to believe in, in that in the product and, and the worth. And if you believe in the worth, you've also got to believe that you're worthy because if you're rendering a service, it's going to give them that much value. Why would you not expect that you're going to get something in return? It's a law of the universe. Whatever you put out, you get back. So if you're leaving somebody with an impression of increase and you're providing service that's life-changing or for their, somebody's going to get a promotion because they bought your product and improved productivity or whatever you're selling. Think about what am I really selling and what's it doing for people and what's that worth? And when you get that appreciation and recognize, well, yeah, of course I'm going to get it back because that's the law. Everything you put in comes back and it comes back multiplied usually. It does, it's not a linear trade. It's nonlinear. And that's the cool thing about universal law. Yeah, I love that because it's it's uh, um, you know what it comes down to is you know you put positive out, but you could also put negative out there, mm-hmm. you know, and and that's going to come back to you as well. And uh, um, and I love what you said there that you know not selling features, but it's the outcome. I I think that gets lost so many times. I I know wow. when I always when people try to sell me, I I always look at it differently. A lot of times I'm more than listening to you know, evaluating them on, on what, what they're trying to sell me. I'm looking at how they're trying to sell me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm judging them on that as much as I am on what they're, you know, what I'm um, interacting with them about. Yeah. And it always amazes me how much um, today, given the resources like your book that are out there and other resources and coaching and all that, how, how frequently people just seem to be really missing the mark and not connecting with their, you know, whoever they're talking to, not coming across as, as are you here to help me or sell me? You yeah. know, and I, I see that so much. Why is that such a struggle still? I, it's awareness. I mean, it, you know, the only thing that really helps people back is awareness. So uh, it's definitely an awareness thing. And I think, you know, we also, I talk about this in the book, you know, a lot of times we get we as we're, as human beings are drawn towards momentum and the question is are you drawing towards the momentum inside or what's going on outside of you and if we're objectively fo- focused on what is and tell, constantly getting distracted or fear of missing out and, you know all over the place then we don't have a lot of order and we don't have a lot of calmness and we don't and then we get stressed trying you know or caught up in games trying to get people's approval and then we're doing things out of mechanics and we're not in the spirit and not recognizing what we're really doing or what we're about not connecting and tapping into our prep our purpose and we're not connecting to you know our mission of what we're supposed to be doing and so it gets lost and that's why all the big stuff you might hear about meditation and everything in today's world is so so important because we have to lean into ourselves and our inner high, you know, get everything from the inside as opposed to the outside. Hey, if you haven't in the next 10, I guarantee probably the next 10 years, it's going to get, it's going to get, the speed is going to go even faster of the change. And if you, if you haven't figured out how to get internal peace and, and draw from the inside, it's your wake up call. If you're listening to this right now, you've got to get the internal, your internal strength and lean in to you, which is solid 
and that's a solid thing to lean on because if you're leaning into stuff outside, it's going it, to, you're going to fall down all the time. Yeah. I can feel that when I'm, when I'm dealing with people that, um, you, you, you put that off. Um, like I recently had a, you know, someone reach out to me and try to sell me and I could, I could, it's like, you can feel the desperation, you know, that oh. I knew his motivation was he, he's got a number to hit and that's what he's focused on. He's not focused on me as a, as a customer. But see, see, that's what people have to get with the law of vibration. We are always vibrating. Yeah. So your customers are picking up what you're putting down with the vibration. So if you're in there and you're not thinking about them and you're thinking about you, you, you could be having stuff come out of your mouth that sounds sounds like it should sound, but you they're going to pick it up. They may not know what it is, right. but they're going to feel uneasy and they're not going to buy. And we've all had that where like, up. You get out of a meeting like something was off there. Did you feel that? That mm -hmm. you know, and it's like that that happens all the time. You know, that something's not right there. What's there's something going on behind the scenes here we're not seeing or hearing about, but it's there. But you can likewise uh, on the opposite side, you could you could meet a sales pro and you're you feel like like all attention is on you. Yep. You're put at ease. And, yeah, you're put at ease and then you you have that no like and trust and you can feel the emotional composite between the two of you. Yep. And, and you're operating as one like and yep. and then the sale is it's easy when you yep. when you're focused on the other person and service servicing. Yep. And I'll tell you, yep. if you're stressed, the easiest thing to do is go serve somebody and do something for somebody and not think about yourself and you'll get out of it. You'll snap out of it. Right. Like you that. bet. You bet. Um, chapter three, know the rules and get into the game. What are the rules? The rules are universal law. 96% of all your, be all of our behavior is habitual, right? And our potential lies in that habitual behavior. And the, the habits are in what, what is referred to as the universal mind or subconscious mind and universal laws apply. So use the laws and get in alignment with the laws and understand the laws you can't lose no. but if you're so so know the rules and get into the game because it you know it's an infinite game and if you understand the rules you're going to win yeah you know there's um i see a lot of books out there on you know how to self how to stop self-sabotaging and things like that that all plays into this right mm -hmm. yeah can you talk about that? Has you know your experiences when you're doing sales training, when you see salespeople self sabotaging? What's going on there? There's a program or condition, way of thought, a fixed idea, belief, um, or lack of belief. You know, typically it's uh, it's around. Well, in salespeople, I think there's four problems that occur in the subconscious mind. One is you don't have a goal and you don't have any desire. That's a problem because if you don't have a goal and you don't have any desire, your life is going to get created by default instead of by design. You're probably not going to be very happy. Okay. Number two is uh, your, you know, beliefs that you picked up or paradigms or thoughts or, you know, whether it's the misconceptions of selling or misconceptions about money or whatever it is you know, those things hold you back. So you got to kind of observe behavior. If you're not getting the results out of the salesperson, it's not getting the results. What is it that's causing that? And dig a little into that, like we talked about earlier. The third real big thing is self-image. I mean, I don't know how many times I've coached and assisted people getting their self-images updated because we go and, you know, we're constantly growing and then we're going for a promotion. You get up into that new promotion, you still got the self-image of the old person. <laughs> you're not leading or you're not doing it. You didn't update the program, man. It's like, it's like walking on a flip phone and everybody else is on iPhone 12 and you're, you didn't, you didn't upgrade your self image. And then the third is like, just looking at the sales process, right? The presentation, like what kind of habitual behaviors there and where could that improve? And that's where you've got a, you know, chapter seven, you know, pros create and amateurs compete. Oh yeah. Yeah. Don't jump ahead on the table of contents on me. Oh, okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Um, yeah. We're not going to give you everything in the book. You got to buy the book uh, to get everything. But uh, 
Um, so if, if I'm a sales leader and I'm seeing one of my people maybe doesn't know the rules and they're struggling to get into the game, what should I be doing as a sales leader to help them? Uh, I mean, sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one and say, look, you know, we know you're more than capable of blowing out this plan. You know what to do, but it's not happening. So let's, let's discuss, like, what do you think, you know, what are the results that you're getting and what do you want to get? What results do you want to get? And look at, those two results and use the law of polarity. Say, okay, well, what kind of activities are you doing that get that result? And what would be the opposite of that or something different? You know, I think there's, I, I refer to in the book, there's a study I, from Forbes about how much time we actually even spend selling. Most of us, you know, if you think about this, you know, contacting people, <clears throat> consulting people and closing, right? Kind of three things. Yep. You got to just keep doing over and over and over again. Yep. Well, how much time are you spending on those profit activities? And, you know, what could happen if, if the average sales pro out there only spends 30% and you've got a great idea and said, I'm going to up mine to 35 or 40, what the heck do you think would happen? Yep. You know? So it, it comes down to really getting people, I think step one is get the person to observe the behavior that's causing the result they don't want. Then say, okay, what would be different behaviors that could be put in place to replace those? And, you know, get them, just like when you're selling, sell them on them, sell yeah. them on the value. You know, you have divinity within you. How's it going to feel when you're 120% to plan and you're going up and you're getting your act to, you know, what's, what kind of steak are you going to be eating at the, the awards dinner or fish or whatever their thing is, you know what I mean? And get their yeah. imaginations around getting enthused about that desire level back up to go for a goal that they really want. And what's the impact to your family and blah, blah, you know, just, just keep activating their imagination on the possibility and, and do the same thing you do when you're selling someone, be the bridge of belief for them. I know yeah. you got it in you, you can do this. Yeah, you know, that's that element of self-sabotage where I've seen that where people are, when they don't really know what they should be doing, they fill that void with a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. So they could say, oh, I'm super busy. I'm doing this, 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 and this, and this. But it's not adding any value. It's not moving anything forward. And, but behind the scenes, they're really, you know, it's trying to get them to recognize, look, you're just filling a void here because you don't know what you, you know, let's address the fact that you don't know, you know, what that next step is. You're afraid or, you know, you're scared to maybe take that step. So you're filling the gap with other stuff. It's really driving into them and, and, uh, and getting them to engage at that level. Is that correct? Yes. We become what we think about. So what are they thinking about? Right. Yep. They may be putting on a brave face of like, I got this, I know, but in reality, they have no clue what to do next, or they're scared. They're scared to yeah. take that step because they don't right. have the confidence. Right. Yeah. Which is tough as a sales leader dealing with that. But in some ways you have to be almost like a therapist, you know, to help them address, you know, these issues you're laying out in your the book. Fastest, the fa and the fastest way to get their confidence back is to get them into action and then see that yeah. they can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And so we're, we're not going to go every chapter, but the next one I want to focus in on is self from the inside out. You touched on this a little bit, but I'd like to dive in this a little bit deeper. And your, your subtitle in this, Purpose, Motives, and Desires, The Law of Dharma. Can you talk about that? Sure. Uh, I think it was Napoleon Hill said, um, we, don't, we should never make a sale without understanding somebody's motive. And there's seven basic motives or, you know, the, the 10 basic motives for a be, human behavior. And I, when you, so, so, per, so, so there's motives and they're typically tied to values and purpose and purpose is the law of Dharma and the law of Dharma states that every soul on this planet, you know, made a decision that they wanted to come down here for a reason. Um, and we come to and through our parents. Uh, you know, we're not owned by our parents. We're just the ve the vehicle is coming through them, but we've got our work to do. Our parents have their work to do. So when you can tap into your purpose and motive and sell it, uh, for yourself, like what is it that I really want? 
what makes me fulfilled, you, you typically find that each of us has this really special, unique gift to give the world. Everybody's got divinity within. And every time that we get the opportunity to share it and give it and it grows, that's what provides us joy and fulfillment. So when you tap into that and you re, you know, a lot of times what happens in conditioning, growing up school, you know, work, trying to get people's approval and fit in is that we mask ourselves in some in, inauthentic plaster, right? And try to put on air sometimes. And we're not necessarily uniquely just being us sharing our gift and when you when you go back your purpose you've always had it you've done it since you were a kid but you may have forgotten about it or it might have gotten covered up in the plaster but you un unveil that and you tap into that and you start making decisions based on that you're going to sell yourself on why you're unique you're going to you're going to feel better you're going to have a better self-image of yourself. You're going to have more self-esteem. And it's probably the most important thing that you want to get taken care of is to sell yourself on you and how, how unique you are and how special you are and get out there and do your gift. And when you're in the spirit of being you, sharing your gifts, boy, if the whole world can wake up and start doing that tomorrow, we'd, yeah. we'd be living on heaven on earth. Yeah. Because that's what we're here to do. We just get lost sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think that's a great place to to end our our episode here of Sales Lead Dog. Uh, the book is The Spirit of Selling Using Universal Laws for Sales Success. The author and our guest, Rhonda Petit. Rhonda, if people want to reach out, uh, connect with you about coaching, again, your company is 3 by 5 Coaching. What's the mm -hmm. best way for them to reach out and connect with you? Uh, the website, www.3x5coaching, like a three by five card, because I'm all about goals. Um, uh, just on there, there's consultation buttons all over my website. So you can reach me and see my services. And that would, that's probably the easiest way. You can also reach me on LinkedIn. And my book, uh, I have a website with everything about the book, www.thespiritofselling. So I hope you can remember that. Yep, and we'll have all that information in our show notes. If you didn't capture all that, check out our show notes on on our uh, podcast website on impellercrm.com. And uh, Rhonda, it's been great having you on Sales Lead Dog. Welcome to the pack. Yay! <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Oh, this, thank you so much, Chris. It's been great. As we end this discussion on Sales Lead Dog, be sure to subscribe to catch all our episodes. On social media, follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Watch the videos on YouTube, and you can also find our episodes on our website at impellercrm.com forward slash Sales Lead Dog. Sales Lead Dog is supported by Impeller CRM, delivering objectively better CRM for business, guaranteed.